Hello again. I hope you're excited to read chapter three of My Father's Dragon. I am. I want to remind you that the book was written by Ruth Stiles Gannett. She wrote the words and illustrated by Ruth Chrisman Gannett. She made the pictures. Now let's remember a little bit about what happened in chapters one and chapter two. So we met a boy named Elmer Elevator and he had made friends with a cat. The cat told him about a baby dragon who had fallen off of his cloud and onto the banks of a river in a place called Wild Island. Now on Wild Island, there are lots of animals that live there. And there's a big, wide, muddy river that's filled with hungry crocodiles. And the animals there do not like crossing the river and they don't like walking all the way around it to get to the other side either. So when this baby dragon fell out of the sky, they decided to keep him and put him to work because dragons can fly. So they tied a big heavy rope around his neck and they make him carry passengers, that's people or animals in this case, who ride and stuff back and forth over the river. And when the cat met the dragon, she was so sad that she wanted to cry because the animals on Wild Island were not being very kind to the baby dragon. So the boy and the cat came up with a plan for the boy to go rescue the dragon. And they packed a knapsack or a backpack. You know, when I read that in the last video, it reminded me of when we sing the bear hunt song and we pretend to pack up our own backpack filled with all the supplies that we'll need. Do you remember any of the things they packed? Lollipops, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, hair ribbons. Yeah, I think that those supplies might come in important later. So think about what they put in the backpack and try to remember it for later. The boy snuck onto a ship that was sailing to an island that's right next door to Wild Island. And here's the last picture in chapter two with the kitty saying goodbye to the boy as he sails away in the ship. Chapter three is called, My Father Finds the Island. Hmm. Let's find out what happens. Let me get comfortable here. Okay. My father hid in the hold for six days and nights. Twice he was nearly caught when the ship stopped to take on more cargo. That means more stuff. But at last he heard a sailor say that the next port would be Cranberry and that they'd be unloading the wheat there. My father knew that the sailors would send him home if they caught him. So he looked in his knapsack. Oh, he's going to get a supply out of his backpack. He looked in his knapsack and took out a rubber band and the empty grain bag with the label saying cranberry. Hmm. So he's got a rubber band and an empty bag. At the last moment, my father got inside of the bag, knapsack and all, folded the top of the bag inside and put the rubber band around the top. He didn't look just exactly like the other bags, but it was the best he could do. Oh, so he's pretending to be more wheat that they're going to unload off of the ship and put into the port at Cranberry so that he can get off the ship and get to Wild Island. Oh, and here's a picture. Okay. There are the grain bags. Inside of each of those three bags, there's wheat. That's what people use to make bread. Um, and there's two sailors who have to pick them up. Now, two of the bags look smooth and one looks a little bit lumpy. Which one do you think the boy is hiding in? Yeah, I think he's in that one too. Soon the sailors came to unload. They lowered a big net into the hold and began moving the bags of wheat. Suddenly, one sailor yelled, Great Scott! This is the strangest bag of wheat I've ever seen. It's all lumpy-like. 
but the label says it's to go to Cranberry. The other sailors looked at the bag too. Mm, I think they're suspicious. And my father, who was in the bag, of course, tried even harder to look like a bag of wheat. Then another sailor felt the bag, and he just happened to get a hold of my father's elbow. I know what this is, he said. This is a bag of dried corn on the cob. And he dumped my father into the big net along with the bags of wheat. Try grabbing your own elbow. I guess it kind of feels a little bit like corn on the cob. Elmer got lucky, didn't he? This all happened in the late afternoon, so late that so late that the merchant in Cranberry, who had ordered the wheat, didn't count his bags until the next morning. He was a very punctual man. That means he's always on time. And he was never late for dinner. The sailors told the captain, and the captain wrote down on a piece of paper that they had delivered 160 bags of wheat and one bag of dried corn on the cob. They left the piece of paper for the merchant and sailed away that evening. My father heard later that the merchant spent the whole next day counting and recounting the bags and feeling each one trying to find the bag of dried corn. You know what happened to the bag of dried corn, right? It was Elmer, and he probably just got up and walked away. The merchant never found the dried corn on the cob, because as soon as it was dark, my father climbed out of the bag, folded it up, and put it back into his knapsack. He walked along the shore to a nice, sandy place and lay down to sleep. Oh, here's a picture. There's Elmer, and I think he's using his knapsack, his backpack, like it's a pillow. He's stretched out under a fruit tree. I wonder if there's something yummy to eat there. He must be so tired. My father was very hungry when he woke up the next morning, just as he was looking to see if he had anything left to eat. Something hit him on the head. It was a tangerine. He had been sleeping right under a tree of big, fat tangerines. Tangerines are sort of like oranges or clementines. They're very tasty. And then he remembered that this was the island of Tangerina. Tangerine trees grew wild everywhere. My father picked as many as he had room for, which was 31 and started off to find Wild Island. He walked and walked and walked along the shore, looking for the rocks that joined the two islands. He walked all day, and once, when he met a fisherman and asked him about Wild Island, the fisherman began to shake and couldn't talk for a long while. It scared him that much, just thinking about it. Finally, he said, many people have tried to explore Wild Island, but not one has come back alive. We think they were eaten by the wild animals. This didn't bother my father. He kept walking and slept on the beach again that night. It was beautifully clear the next day, and way down the shore, my father could see long line of rocks leading out into the ocean and way, way out at the end he could just see a tiny patch of green. He quickly ate seven tangerines and started down toward the beach. It was almost dark when he came to the rocks. But there, way out in the ocean, was the patch of green wild island. He sat down and rested a while, remembering that the cat had said, if you can, go out to the island at night, because then the wild animals, oops, 
won't see you coming along the rocks, and you can hide when you get there. So my father picked seven more tangerines, put on his black rubber boots, oh, that's another thing he packed in his knapsack, and waited for dark. Oh, wow. So the cat gave him advice that he could sneak across the rocks into the island at night and that the animals wouldn't see him right away. It was a very black night and my father could hardly see the rocks ahead of him. Sometimes they were quite high and sometimes the waves had almost covered them and they were slippery and hard to walk on. Sometimes the rocks were far apart and my father had to get a running start and leap from one to the next. After a while, he began to hear a rumble noise. Ooh, a rumble. That's interesting. I wonder what would be making a loud rumbling noise. It grew louder and louder as he got nearer to the island. At last, it seemed as if he was right on top of the noise. And that's because he was. He had jumped from a rock onto the back of a small whale who was fast asleep and cuddled up between two rocks. The whale was snoring and making more noise than a steam shovel. That's like a tractor. So it never heard my father say, oh, I didn't know it was you. And it never even knew that my father had jumped on its back by mistake. Well, here's a picture of it. It's a little picture, so I'll get it really close. There's the boy, and you can see he's jumping from rock to rock to rock, and there's the whale who was snoring in the water, and the boy had jumped on his back. That's funny. For seven hours. Wow, that's like a whole school day. My father climbed and slipped and leapt from rock to rock. But while it was still dark, he finally reached the very last rock and stepped off onto wild island. Wow, there's a picture here. This is quite beautiful. This reminds me a little bit of when we read the book, Unfortunately. And remember the character in that book drops into the ocean and swims away from the sharks and then climbs onto an island where there are tigers and there's plants. They kind of look like this to me. Some of these plants look spiky. Some of them look like upside down hearts. It's a very mysterious place. He's made it there then. That's the end of chapter three. So he made it off the ship by hiding inside of a bag, pretending to be some dried corn on the cob. And then he walked along the beach, picked some tangerines, and climbed all the way across all those rocks in the ocean for seven hours and made it to Wild Island. Whew, that's very exciting. I can't wait to see what happens in chapter four. See you then.